we'll talk about magnetism. So we've seen electricity and now we'll talk about magnetism and eventually we'll see how these two things are related. So the first kind of conceptual thing. So if we remember, so let's think back to electric dipoles. So we remember there was a positive charge and a negative charge. And when we drew our electric field lines, it kind of looked like this, right? So the way that magnets work is that they are also dipoles. So magnets are dipoles. So if we take the simple example of like a bar magnet and there's a north and a south pole, then your magnetic field lines will also look like the electric field lines for a dipole. So these are magnetic field lines. And so kind of as an aside, uh, so with electric charge and force and electric fields, we were allowed to have just a single electric charge and it had field lines that radiated inward or outward based on its charge. Magnets don't have, and so that's called a monopole. If you just have one charge, that's a monopole. If you have two charges, it's a dipole. Magnets have to have dipoles. If you discover a magnetic monopole, then you win a Nobel Prize kind of thing. So uh, you're always going to have, well, for stuff like uh, a bar magnet or uh, as I'll show you in a second, um, like an atom, you're going to have field lines that look like this because magnets at their most fundamental level are dipoles. So when I say that you can't have a monopole, you might think a magnetic monopole, you might think, well, what if I take my bar magnet and I just keep cutting it in half? Eventually, I'm going to get some tiny bit of magnet that's by itself, right? So if you keep doing this, you'll get down to an atomic scale. And let's say this is like a really simple atom where there's just a positive charge here and a negative charge out here that's in some orbital. This is as far as you can keep going before there's no more magnetic field. So if you removed these positive and negative charges so that there is only one of them, you have no more magnetic field. And that's because the magnetic field one of the ways that you can make a magnetic field is through moving charges or in other words, a current, right? So anytime you have charges moving, you also, that means you have a current. 
And so even on the atomic scale, you have electrons that are doing their quantum movement. They're moving around. That movement creates a current and that current can make a magnetic field. Now, obviously every, not everything is magnetized. Most things are not magnetized. So what's happening in most materials, so in most materials, you'll have some magnetic fields that, or basically you'll have magnetic fields that point in random directions because your atoms are just kind of randomly arranged. And so the total magnetic field, because again, just like electric fields, magnetic fields are going to be vectors. And because they're vectors and they're all pointed in different random directions, the total magnetic field is zero. Or in other words, B equals zero. And B is the uh, the variable that we use for magnetic fields. So there are special materials that are magnetic, right? You can buy a magnet at the store, you can stick it on your fridge. So in special materials, so these were magnetic fields. All of your magnetic fields can point in the same direction. And now your, your net magnetic field is no longer zero and you can have a magnetic field generated by this material. So some materials have a permanent magnetic field. So these would be permanent magnets. So permanent magnet. Permanent magnetic field. And then there are temporary magnets. There's a few different kinds of those. There are ferromagnetic materials. And these typically will have randomly generated or randomly oriented magnetic fields. And then in the presence of a, an external magnetic field, their magnetic fields will align and then they become a magnet. So ferromagnetic materials are, so random magnetic field normally, and then, They have a, they can have an ordered magnetic field in the presence of a, an external magnetic field.
And so if you, so Pharaoh is either Latin or Greek for iron. And so this is how magnets can pick up things that are made out of iron. So the, you bring a magnet close to something that is made out of iron, then the magnetic field of the iron object will align in such a way that the now iron magnetic material is attracted to the uh, base of the original permanent magnet, for example. And so that gets into magnetic attraction. And so if we go back to our bar magnet example, just like for electric charges, where positive and negative attracted, the positive and negative or the north and south poles of the magnet will attract. And then like Poles will repel. There's one other type of magnet, but we'll talk about later and that's an electromagnet where you can have this current going through a wire and you wrap it around some ferromagnetic material and you make yourself a magnet. But we'll talk about that later because that involves some equations that we haven't gotten to yet. So most of this magnet stuff has just been kind of conceptual. So now let's talk about some equations. So first we'll talk about magnetic force. So the force that, so this is magnetic force. This is charge. This is velocity. And this is magnetic field. The units for magnetic field are Tesla which is a capital T. You also might see uh, a capital G, which is for Gauss. And one Tesla is equal to 10, er, 10 to the four Gauss. So a Gauss is something that's very small and a Tesla is something that's very big in terms of magnetic fields. And so something that we talked about last semester and something that we will talk about again this semester is this cross product. And for our PLTL tomorrow, we'll review cross products and those rules, and we'll apply them to magnetic fields. So mathematically, if you want just the magnitude of this magnetic force, you can just take the magnitude of all of these things, 
and then multiply by the sine of the angle between them. And I'll show some examples of this on the next slide. So one of the first conceptual things to take away from this is that if you don't have a charge, then you're not going to feel a magnetic force. And if you don't, if you're not moving, then you also don't have a magnetic force. So stationary objects don't have a magnetic force because V would be zero. And then neutral charged objects also don't have a magnetic force because then charge would be zero. So if we do an example where the magnetic field is this way and your charge Q is moving in this direction, If I do this equation, so what is the sign of, or what's the angle between V and B? Yeah, so they're in the same direction. So the angle would be zero. And if you plug sine of zero into your calculator, you get zero. So even though we have a charge and it's moving now and we have a magnetic field, we still get zero magnetic force. So the only way to get a magnetic force is to have a charge that's moving and it has to be moving in not the same axis as the magnetic field. Because this picture, even if you have Q moving, oh my goodness the exact opposite direction as B, now what is the sign or what's the angle between V and B? Yeah, 180. You plug sine of 180 into your calculator, you'll get zero. So any other angle between zero and 180, you'll get some magnetic force, but those two angles will not give you a magnetic force. So you need a charge that's moving in the same area that has a magnetic field, and the velocity of the particle can't be either exactly in the direction of the magnetic field or in the exact opposite direction as the magnetic field. If you satisfy all of those conditions, then you can have a magnetic force. <laughs> 